Hey guys, happy May. Um, I want to thank you for joining me for my sermon called Building Plan. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time together. I thank you for what you're about to do and what you're about to speak. And I thank you for the lives that will be changed through this sermon for the people that are watching right now and for the people that will be watching. You are God and you deserve to be praised and we just lift you up right now. We just worship you and adore your name, God. Sit with us. Sup with us. Do whatever you want with us. Build us, God. And I pray that you will just touch everybody's life that you're that I'm speaking to today, near or far, in Canada or or abroad, oh God, I pray that you just will sit, sit on me, speak to me, speak through me, in the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys, this sermon has been a journey uh, to get to. Um, I started um, thinking about it um, uh, on Thursday. I should back up and say sermons come to me in all different ways. Uh, so sometimes I get a song, sometimes I get a scripture, sometimes I get both, sometimes I get a word, sometimes, you know, I'm the kind of I'm the kind of person, sermonically, that it it just ha uh, develops in different ways. Uh, some preachers have a certain way it always develops, a certain way they always prepare and whatever, and God works in that way. Not me, <laughs> not me. It's always different and always different mechanisms he has me use. Anyway, this particular sermon... On, I think it was Wednesday night, um, I was sitting in my kitchen and, um, and Come Wake Me Up by Rascal Flatts started playing in my head. And I thought, oh, <laughs> this is strange because... I'm like, oh yeah, it's one of those weeks when I hear the song and I get an immediate picture of what you want. So, I, to, um, to be truthful, I kind of ignored it for a few days, went about my business, uh, listened to uh, the cool new Elevation uh, church, uh, church basement album. That's out now on Spotify. Shameless plug. Um, and I was... And this song kept coming to me. Come Wake Me Up by Rascal Flatts. And finally... Uh, and I thought... Wednesday... Thursday went by. Friday went by. And I was like... Okay, I better listen to this song, expecting a full picture of what he wanted. So, <laughs> I listened to the song, I watched the video, and I'm like, nothing's coming to me here. Uh, what do you want me to talk about? Do you want me to talk about uh, you waking the church up? Uh, you, you know, what do you want me to talk about? Nothing, nothing came. Because usually after I listen to the song that's playing in my heart for a sermon, uh, the picture comes or the note comes. Um, and then I, and I thought, okay, maybe you want me to go with the words. So I, so I, and it was like, okay, 
uh, what is this? And then the word sober came to mind. And I thought, okay, I'll, I'll... No, the words California sober came to mind. So I look that up. And, and I look up the definition for that, and I, they said um, a, a reduction of alcohol and drugs. And I thought, what does this have to do with come wake me up? And I thought, are you, like, um, and I thought, what do you mean? So... I thought, this, this, this doesn't make any sense. I'm like, what do you want me to tell your people? And I was getting up, kind of upset. I was like, okay. I listened to the song you wanted me to. I looked up California Silver like you wanted me to. And this doesn't make sense. Come wake me up. Come Wake Me Up is about a guy who who can't get over a girl and, and the memories are just killing him. Um, and, he's, and he's like, uh, come wake me up. I'm in a dream and I'm in a long state. And California Sober is like a re reduction of drugs and alcohol. And the album, um, the Ele finally, the Elevation album that I've been listening to for the past two days, Church Basement. Um, then I listened to a song on there called Build Your Church, and uh, sung by uh, Chris Brown and Naomi Rain. Uh, Chris Brown of Elevation Worship and Naomi Rain of uh, Maverick City Music. Uh, so, I, as I was listening to this, I said, oh, okay, that's what you want me to talk about. Uh, so, so, this is how I came to this sermon. What he said to me was, um, he said, the people of God have been in a lull. He said, we've been in a lull for a long time. And he said, um, we need to be soberly minded. He, he said, we need to be very diligent, not in what we take in and what we consume. And he saying, he said, oh, he said a lot of people think this pandemic is going to lead to um, the mark of the beast and the rapture and all that. And he said to me, look beyond what you think it's going to lead to. And he said, um, pe people are lulled in this false sense of um, either panic or security. Like, so people are either panicking too much or they're too secure and God will protect me and all that stuff. Or they're too locked up in fear. And... And he's saying, I need people to be soberly minded because he's saying, this pandemic is not to build churches. It's not to build buildings. It's to build people. And he, he talked to me about the building of people. We've, we've been, we've been, uh, the church has been preaching to people uh, for generations. But he says, I don't want um, uh, preachers 
to preach to people anymore. I want preachers to be builders, to build, to help build the body of Christ. He'll, he'll be like, I'm sending the people, but the problem is they're not being built. They're being preached to. And he said, the difference with being preached to, um, being preached to is like, you get a sermon that you can use in your life and, and you take it or leave it or you you take some of it, leave some of it and you get, or even worse, you get kind of a drugging high and you're like, yes, I can do it. I feel good. But you don't get the tools to actually build your life. He's saying, um, pastors, uh, he says, he said to me, uh, preachers, pastors, ministers need to stop preaching sermons and start building people. And I said, well, how do we do that? He said, well, each pastor has to use his or her gifting in order to build people. And he said it, it will happen in different ways. Um, he said sometimes pastors will bring specialists to their churches or to their congregations to actually give them tools for life or tools to for their finances or tools for their, you know, people to uh, let them have the God ordained uh, um, prosperity that, that, that God has designed for them. And when I say prosperity there, I mean shalom, I mean all, all around prosperity. I don't mean just financial prosperity. And he's saying, uh, or some pastors will be uh, building their churches by artistry. So some pastor, some churches where worship is strong, the Lord will use uh, worship and the arts and stuff like that to build people. So he's saying we as people need to be focused on building ourselves, each other, and if we build ourselves and each other, we'll build we'll build the church and. What I mean by building is to enhance the, the lives of people, basically. It's to um, permanently impact and enhance the, the lives of people. That's what, that's what I mean by building the church. Like, because when, when you build a building, you start with the foundation and then each block or each brick uh, makes that foundation sure. See, we have a lot of preachers that are preaching and not enough building going on. Uh, the Lord wants to see more built more building and less preaching like because you could get a good sermon and take notes and all that stuff but not really be built or not really have the tools to kind of build yourself up and building is not only dependent on the pastor building starts with your minister or pastor or whatever and the tools that they put in place. 
But with continuous building, you as a church member, you as a person, need to strengthen yourself by building yourself, by putting in tools for your life that can um, build yourself up, make your, make your foundation stronger. Each brick you put in your life, it can either build you or make the foundation uh, crumble. So right now, are you putting things in your life to build you? Are you, or are you putting things in your life that will make you crumble? That's his question. And uh, he said, he said to Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. Meaning, upon Jesus, I will build people. So, when you're talking about building people, the first step to building people is to have a relationship with Christ. And I'm not saying just to know about Christ, and I'm not saying just to love Christ. I'm saying to have an ongoing uh, con conversing relationship with Christ. That is the first building block on, what, on which, which we stand. If you don't have a, rela have a relationship with Christ, Christ um, any building block you build will crumble because a foundation without Christ is not a foundation. And the, in order to build a relationship with Christ, it takes time, it takes energy, it takes it takes fortitude. Like anybody married, I'm not married, but I have friends and I have a family. But, um, and in all of my relationships, uh, the ones that are weaker are the, are the ones that I'm not taking time to build. So that's what's, that's what the issue is. See, we expect our, relation, our relationship with Christ to just happen. We, ex, like, we expect when we get saved, oh, uh, we receive this Holy Spirit, and that's it. We don't put the work in. We don't put the time in. We read a few scriptures once in a while, and that's it. Or we hear the pastor um, preach on Sunday, and we wonder why we're failing in life. Well, you're failing in life or not succeeding or not being being productive in life because you're not building a relationship. And to build a relationship is key. Um, uh, you, you can't just expect to find a relationship, you have to uh, build it. And I honestly believe when you build it, that's when magic, that's not magic, that's when God's Holy Spirit ap appears. And, and as well, as well as spiritually, um, he wants us to build our lives emotionally, financially. He wants us to be thriving and building our lives in all those kind of ways. And um, the second way you can build is um, by building community with building a relationship with yourself and community with others. Um, you need to get to know yourself. 
You need to get to know what you like. You need to get to know how you react. You need to spend time with yourself. A lot of people don't spend time with your spend time with themselves, and that's the problem. They don't work on themselves enough to build themselves enough to know themselves and that's where they run into all, all these kind of problems because if you don't spend time with yourself if you don't get to know yourself you'll let everyone um put bricks that crumble into you when you'll be left as a as a mess unable to uh, function in your life so you need to start building yourself and then you, you must build community with others. Um, when you build community with others, it strengthen, strengthens you. When there, when there is, when you have n numbers, at least one person, you feel so much lighter and so much stronger. When I'm going through something and I call uh, one of my friends or Facebook one of my friends and, and they kind of respond to me and encourage me, it gives me hope. Could it be the reason you're hopeless is that you're by yourself and you don't communicate with people and you smile and say everything's all right when it's not? The Lord wants you to open up and begin building community. And us, so that is the first part of the sermon. Um, the other part of the sermon is that I sense there are ways that God wants to build the church that are totally new. I, I sense that he is wanting to to take the church really out of the four walls of the building and really start um, investing into people. Um, I see this whole 24-hour uh, uh, church thing where, where the service might stop but the services of the church don't close. Like I see churches having 24-hour online counseling and all these different addictions kind of uh, centers to help people at 24 hours and all these things to help, help just people build their lives and build the church and I just see like even I, another thing that I see is like a building in technology um just like new new compute new uh, programs with computers for all you computer techie thing all you computer techie people out there, just new programs with computers to keep kids safe and, you know, even, like, for stuff like um, dating safely online or, you know, all these new innovative things. I see this all coming, um, but, we, but in order for the people that can do um, what I see to get the revelation, we need to stop and release our minds from what we think is church and what we think is coming and what we think this pandemic has, uh, is bringing about because it might be bringing about something different. This might not be about the mark of the beast. The whole coronavirus may not be about the coming of Christ. All the deaths and everything may not be about the coming of Christ. Uh, you may be a researcher watching me right now 
and God wants to use your brain to not only come up with a vaccine to totally not just lower down on the symptoms like the vaccines they have it now, but to eradicate the symptoms and to come up with medications that are complex enough to deal with all of this, all of the symptoms, and to save lives of people who have COVID-19, or maybe you're a carpenter, and the Lord wants to use you to design uh, different building materials that last longer and are, are cheaper but durable. Maybe you're, you know, um, whatever, um, a financial person and God wants to um, use you to uh, change the way uh, people in the world do banking. He, he says he wants Yes, Lord. He want. He said to me just now. He wants to build the church in uncommon ways. He. I'll say that again. He wants to build the church in uncommon ways. He's saying when he says he wants to build the church, we often think he wants to bring. Um, um, black people, white people, Latino people together and all that. That's one, very one minuscule aspect of building the church. But that's not all. That's not, in fact, that's not building the church at all. That's just getting people in the seats. And that's not really building people. That's just getting them to come to church, which is which is wonderful. We want people to come to the buildings to, you know, get fed and stuff. But when he says he wants to build the church, he wants to build people. And from building people, he wants... From the outflow of first building people, he wants to uh, influence technology, influence medicine, influence the education system. For all you teachers out there, God, I really sense God wanted to build the church through education, through commerce through all these different systems that we think God doesn't care about. Even for all you environmentalists, health nuts out there, God wants to use you to build the church in uncommon ways. So when he says, upon this rock, I will build my church, he's not just talking about letting uh, Asian people sit with East uh East Indian people or West Indian people sit with Caucasian people. No, this is not building the church. This is just filling the church. And he doesn't want to just fill the church. He wants to build the church. Um, that's what he wants to do. He, wa he wants to totally blow our minds with the ways he wants to build the church. But then we, we need to come out of the church mindset that we think that there needs to be three songs in a sermon. Uh, like I said before, before in another video, the Lord wants to wants to change the way preachers are preaching, the way worship teams are worshiping. He just not change it in its purpose. It's all to glorify God. But the ways that he wants to do it, it's so amazing and mind-blowing. And, and the ways he wants to build the church, you would think that 
you would say to me, what? God cares about that? Yes, he does. It's his world. Um, and those of you who think the pandemic is just, oh, look up, redemption, draw, nigh, you're missing the point. God stopped the world, literally, to, for us to just, um, take stock of our lives, and not to just take stock of our lives, but to enhance our lives and he may not he might he may not have uh caused it caused coronavirus that may that probably was just life but he's gonna use it i'm not saying he caused it but i'm saying he used it he let it happen because um he just wanted us to take stock and he wanted us to build the church um and he said um except the lord build the house they labor in vain that build it so churches are now laboring they're tired pastors are quitting by the droves and because they're laboring by themselves but like but what we have to understand is it's not our church to build it is we're just the blessed ones that he's called to help him do it <laughs> like i said we're just the managers and he's the ceo uh like i said in in um a like I said in a video in a pre previous video we need to stop trying to build the church in our own strength and let him build his church and let him give us divine instruction when I look at the the New Testament I find it so interesting that God was so when I look at the Old Testament sorry um, I find it so interesting that God was so um, meticulous when he told uh, Noah to build the ark Solomon to build the tabernacle he was so meticulous he said the kind of wood he said how high and it is so even even tiresome to read, very tedious to read. If you read that passage of scripture, you'll, you'll fall asleep because it's so, so meticulous. So if he was meticulous then, and if he doesn't change, what makes you think he's just going to give you something and expect you to figure it out? He wants to be very meticulous with his word and the building that I'm talking about um, he wants to be very meticulous with that because different not not every church will build everything some churches will build some things while others will build something else and others will build still something else it's all about enhancing and perfecting the kingdom of God. So, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate your support. Um, it's, it's really wonderful. And I was just looking, looking at it, looking at my old, I was just thinking about my old YouTube videos, and do you know it's been 10 years since I started my ministry online, first with YouTube for the first few years, and then with Facebook.
So thank you for all your support, all your subscriptions, all your love, all your comments. I really appreciate it. I couldn't do this without you. Thank you so much. And, oh, another thing was, when I was listening to the song Build Your Church, I was thinking, I, I felt God say, are, are they ready for me to really build, or, or is that something uh, that they're just saying that that they want me to build my church because he's saying building the church and really building people not just buildings are is really uncomfortable it can get really sticky it can get really uncomfortable and it's not going to be wonderful all the time it's going to be a fight but he's saying as you build and as you begin to fight i will be with you I will be the one fighting with you and for you and through you and you won't have to fight alone. Building the church is not going to be easy because you're going to have to kick against a lot of preconceived uh, notions that people have of what church should be. And he's saying, I will, I will be with you, I will fight for you, I will fight through you as you build the church. He's saying, I will be with you, I will fight for you, I will fight through you, as you build the church. And remember, building the church is not about building buildings, it's about building people. Thank you guys so much. Build your church, build your church, Build it from the build it from the ground up it's your church. Build your church. Build your church. Build it from the ground up we're your church. Build your church. Build your church. Thank you so much guys.